Hey boys and girls, welcome to Faith Flight School. I'm Captain Tyler. Here at Faith Flight School, we learn about the Word of God and how to be doers of it. When we're doers of God's Word and what He shows us to do, we receive all the benefits and all the blessings that God has for us. Today, we're going to continue learning about Psalm 91 and God's promise for protection. Are you ready to get started? Let's head to the hangar for some praise and worship. Hello, boys and girls. How's everybody doing? Good. You guys ready for worship? Everybody stand up. Wherever you're at, stand up. Some of you guys look a little sleepy. Do we need to do some, uh, some waking up exercises? All right, take your right arm out. Wiggle it around. Wiggle it down and wiggle it up. Take your, your left arm, this one, and wiggle it, and wiggle it down low, and wiggle it up high, and wiggle your right foot, leg, and wiggle your left foot and your leg, and do a half spin, uh, and then do a half spin this way. Are you guys excited to worship the Lord tonight? Yeah. I know you guys know this song. So sing it loud, sing it to the Lord, right? You're not singing for us, you're singing for God. So let's hear us as we sing this.
offering time? There it is. That's what I like to hear. All right. So I have a Bible with me. So that means I'm probably going to read a scripture, right? So if I am in the book of Matthew, who can tell me what book I'm in? Is it the Old Testament or the New Testament? No. Miss Charity? It is the New Testament. Thank you, Miss Charity. All right. Matthew 6, verse 24 says, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will devote to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. So I have this heart with me. It's kind of comical. It's very large and fluffy. This represents your heart. And this represents this represents God and all of his things. And this represents money. It's pretty obvious, right? So that scripture says we cannot serve one thing and also serve the other. So I can't serve God and also be serving money because my heart's over here. And I can't be serving money and be serving God because my heart's over here. I can't be in both places at the same time, right? Can I be, can I, I this, this is one thing. Can it be over here and there at the same time? No, no it can't. Well, why? Well, in the same chapter... In the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 21, which is a little bit above the one we read before, it says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So, that means if I'm honoring or treasuring money, where's my heart at? It's with the money. If I'm treasuring and honoring God, where's my heart at? It's with God and his things. Now you can't do both. You either have to do one or the other. Now you're probably thinking, Mr. William, you said it's offering time. What does this have to do with offering? We talked about money, but how does it apply? Well, if we go back to the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. At offering time, there is no pressure ever to give into the offering. Because if your heart is right here honoring the things of God, you will want to give whenever you have the opportunity. You won't be serving money and then go, oh, it's Sunday, I'm at church, I gotta serve the Lord. You can't do that. But even though we're over here and we're not over with the money, that doesn't mean you aren't gonna have money and be poor. That means that if you seek first the kingdom of God, all of these things, money, clothes, friends, time with your family, playing sports, all of those things will be added to you because he knows the desires of your heart. So, if you are here, are you going to be poor? Are you not going to have any friends? No, you're going to have all of those things and more. Can you say amen? We've been learning about Psalm 91 and how it is God's will to protect us. And it also reveals to us how he will do this. We have a part to play and God has a part to play. And when we're doers of what our part is, God is always faithful to do his part. Last time we learned that it was our part to say of the Lord. We looked at the beginning of Psalm 91 and we, we heard the account of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and how they said of the Lord, He will protect us. He's our fortress. He's our protector. And no matter what happens, we know He's faithful to do that. And because they spoke up and said that, when they were thrown into the fire, do you remember what happened? That's right, the fire didn't even touch them. They were standing in the middle of it and it, they didn't even smell like fire when they came out. That is amazing, what a great example of God's protection. So this time we're going to look at the next few verses that tell us another part that we play and that's to not be afraid. So to open your manual, I have mine open, we're gonna go to, to Psalm 91 and we're gonna look at verses five through eight. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the air that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Did you hear that? It said that 
it shall not come near us. So let's say what our part is. I want you to say it with me three times. We're gonna say, I will not be afraid. Are you ready? I will not be afraid. One more, another time. I will not be afraid. One more. I will not be afraid. You know, we can say this when we might feel fear. It doesn't mean that fear won't come, but it means that we can choose, because it's a choice, whether we fear or not, to stand up and say, I will not fear. God is faithful, and I know he'll be faithful to do his part. If I choose not to fear, and I say of him that he will protect me. And we can stand on that. So let's look a little closer at this verse to look more at what his part is. He says, when we choose not to fear, notice this, it says that, we shall not be afraid, so that's our part, right? Not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Now let's look at these three words, day, noonday, and night. Is there any time of day that doesn't cover? No, day means when the sun's up, night means the sun's down, and noon covers all the in between. So we can know that no matter what, all day long, day, noon, day, and night, that if we're not afraid, it says that no matter what happens, it cannot come near us. Now we live in a world with a lot of things going on, and it can look like grief and sorrow and destruction all around us, but we can be right in the midst of it just like they were in the midst of that fire. And we can know that even if a thousand fall at our right hand, our side, and 10,000 at our right hand can't come near us. We will refuse to be afraid. And when we do, God will do his part and protect us. And you know what else? At the very end of this, it says that only with our eyes shall we see the reward of the wicked. So that means we'll see it around us, but it can't come near us. That's such good news. And when, when that's happening, when all around us, all these things are happening, but we stay protected, it becomes a light for Jesus. And then it gives us an open door to share with others why we're protected. And then we can share the good news about Jesus. And then they can learn how to be protected too by trusting in him. It's a good thing. Now, we're going to look at another example of someone that uh, did this in the Bible, and they were in a pretty scary situation. So let's see what they, how they did their part of Psalm 91. So we're talking about not fearing, right? Yep. That's what we're talking about today, and that that's part of our part. Like when we're looking at, anytime we're learning something from the Bible, we're looking at what's my part, what's God's part. So we're talking about we do not have to fear. And we have to choose, I'm not going to fear. So we're going to look at a guy in the Bible today that, that looked like he had a really good reason to be afraid. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Okay, so this story, now remember, when we open up our Bible and we read about these people, these people were real people. This happened. It's every bit as real about as reading any other point in history that you learn in your history class. This is real. These were real people. So we're going to talk about Peter. Does anybody remember who Peter is? Who can tell me who Peter was? Yes. He was one of the disciples, so he spent time with Jesus, okay? So this was after Jesus had died and was raised from the dead and had ascended back into heaven, and the disciples had been gone out. He said, go and tell the world. So the disciples were out, and they were telling the world, right? And everybody wasn't happy about that, though, right? Do you remember that the disciples had enemies just like Jesus did? Those same Pharisees were still looking to get rid of the disciples because they didn't want them talking about Jesus. Remember that? Well, Herod was the one in charge, right? We remember who Herod is? Okay, so Herod was in charge, and he had arrested James and had him killed. James was another disciple, right? Remember that? So he was somebody that else that knew Jesus, and he had been killed. And the, the enemies of Jesus and the enemies of the disciples were really excited about it. And so Herod's like, hey, that may be popular. So do you know what he did? He arrested another one. He arrested Peter. So he had Peter thrown in jail. Now, remember, James was one of the other disciples. That was a friend of his. James had been killed. Do you think Peter had an, a reason to be afraid about being arrested by the same man that had killed Peter? I mean, killed James? Do you think that seems like a good reason to be afraid, maybe, right? Yeah. Okay, but do we have to be afraid just because it, we feel fear? No. no. We have a choice to choose to yield to fear or choose to resist fear. 
So we're going to look at Peter. So Peter got thrown in jail, and he wanted to make sure he wasn't going to get away. So he had Peter put, he gave a squad, a four squads of four. So how many is that? What's four times four? 16. He had 16 soldiers. And was, was, was Peter like a big, you know, Goliath-sized soldier guy? No, he was a fisherman, right? And he had 16 highly trained soldiers guarding him to make sure he didn't get away, right? Okay, so they had, they had, uh, he had been arrested, and the next day he was going to bring him up, and he was going to bring them up in, into the trial and whatever, and his plan was to kill him, Okay. So, what do you think you would be doing if your friend had already been murdered and you got arrested by the same person and they're going to go and take you to, the, to court tomorrow and the plan is for them to kill you? What do you think you would be doing that night? Well, I can tell you what a lot of people are doing. Those are really good answers. Praying or crying, maybe some of both. A lot of people would have been like, oh, God, oh, God, please. I didn't do anything wrong. I was just doing what Jesus said to do. And please help me. Okay, do you know what Peter's doing? Peter is not crying. Peter is not wailing. Peter is not praying as hard as he can. Peter was asleep. And not like he wore himself out and, you know, he's kind of dozing off. No, the Bible says he was so asleep that when God, because he was doing his part, what was Peter not doing? Was Peter fearing at this point? No, he was not afraid. If you are sound asleep, you are not worrying, right? I'm not. So he's sound asleep, and the Lord, we know from our scripture that we say, the Lord is my protector, and we choose not to fear, and then what does God do? God does the protecting exactly right. So do you know what God did? God did something supernatural. He sent an angel, and the angel comes into the room, it says, the Bible says there was a light. And you can read this story in the book of Acts. It's Acts chapter 12. You can read it for yourself. It's awesome. So, there was a bright light, but it doesn't wake up the soldiers. In fact, it doesn't wake up Peter. Peter is so asleep that the angel had to strike him to wake him up. So Peter's just, you know, he thought he was seeing a vision. So he's, you know, he's, and the angel's like, okay, Peter, get up. So Peter gets up. He's like, put on your coat. He goes, puts on his coat. And he goes, come with me. Well, in the midst of that, when the angel showed up, the chains fell off. Fell off. No help. Now, they were not loose like that. They had bolted them on so he couldn't get loose. His chains, when the angel showed up, they fell off. So then he goes, okay, come with me. They go to the first gate. And do you know what? Back in those days, they had electric nothing. Now we have, like, gates. We can push the button in our... our garage door goes up, right? They didn't have that back then. But when they walked up to that gate, the first gate, it opened all by itself. And, the, and it went through. Angel said, come on. They went to the next gate. They passed how many soldiers? 16 highly trained, dangerous soldiers. And they go to the next gate. They pass more soldiers. They open the gate. Once he gets out, out of the prison, out into the street, the angel disappears. The angel came and did an angel rescue that night in the jail. Now, Peter, once he got out on the street, he's like, hey, wait a minute. I'm not asleep. I'm really out. And you know what he said? The Lord has rescued me. And you know what? The Bible says that while he was in jail and he's sleeping, the church was praying. So the church that he was a part of, that he ministered to and everything, they were on their knees and they were praying because this man was supposed to be killed in the morning. And they're praying. They're praying. They're asking the Lord to help. Now, they were not praying. Oh, God. They're like, no, Lord, we know that whatever you have to do, you, will, you can protect him. You can bring him out. And so Peter comes out. He goes, praise the Lord. He has delivered me. And so then he went and found the church. Now, what about us? Most of us are not going to have to face prison or, uh, prison or death because we follow Jesus. But have you ever faced a situation that looked impossible? One that made you feel afraid? Yeah, I have. Lots of things make you feel afraid. And do you know that you can feel afraid? Like we've heard it before. Your knees can actually be knocking together and you can choose not to fear. Peter was not afraid. So you can be facing something big, something bad, and 
You can do the same thing that Peter did. You can say, I trust in you. I believe in you. And when fear comes, what do we do? Do we just go, I'm not going to look at it. I'm just not going to think about it. I'm just not. No, that's not enough. What do we have to do? We have to resist it, right? We say, no, I'm not going to fear. I resist fear. God is my protector because we get what we say of the Lord. Hi, I'm a here. I'm a mouse. We're going to hide God's word in our heart from Psalms 91 verses 5 through 10. You've been learning that God has a part and we have a part. These verses show us that our part is to not fear. So I'm going to show you the hand motions. You pay close attention so you can join me in just a minute because we're going to memorize God's word. It says, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night. So we're not afraid. So we're going to shake our head no. Nor of the arrow that flies by day. So you're going to act like you're shooting a bow and arrow. Nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. So we're going to walk in place for that part. A thousand may fall at your side. So you take your left hand and put it to your side. 10,000 at your right hand. You do the same thing with your right hand. But it shall not come near you. You're going to lean back when cross your arms because you're confident it's not coming close to you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. You're going to put your hand above your eyes and look around as you say that part. Because you have made the Lord, who is your refuge, even the most high, so you're going to point at yourself because this is your job. Your dwelling place. You're going to put your fingers together and make a roof over your head. Nor evil shall befall you, nor any plague come near your dwelling. So you're going to put your finger and just say, that is like you're saying, no way. And that's Psalms 91, 5 through 10. All right, everybody, stand up and join me. You're going to do it with me this time. Here we go. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and receive the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Psalm 91, 5 through 10. Boy, you guys did a great job. We'll learn more next time. Hello, boys and girls. Hello. I'm Dr. No. Remember, that's K-N-O, Faith Flight School's resident expert in all things factual, scientific, and fun. And I, and I am Dr. Elements, and we are here to talk to you about a very exciting scientific law, and that is the law of electromagnetism. Oh, electromagnetism. It's so much fun. Okay, <laughs> boys and girls, you've played with magnets before. Well, I have here a magnet wand. It's a piece of plastic. It's a stick. It's got a magnet inside of it. Now, magnets are simple types of metals that have been given an electrical charge. Now, your parents have probably told you to be careful playing around electricity, yes? Mm -hmm. Now, everything has an electrical charge. These paper clips and safety pins have an electrical charge. And the charge is so similar to the magnet that when I put the two together, it holds on. It is drawn to it. It is attracted to it by the magnetic current, the electric current that is going through the magnets. Now, boys and girls, what's very fascinating about this scientific law is that it is a perfect illustration of a spiritual law. Oh, yes, I believe I know the one you're talking about. And yes. we can find it in Job 3.25. That's the one. It's in, in our, our manuals. manuals. It says, <clears throat> For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me, and what I dreaded has happened to me. The thing I feared has come upon me. The thing I've dreaded has happened to me. So that's like with the magnets attracting the metals of the paperclip here. It's like our fear attracting what we are afraid of. Exactly. That's what was happening to Job in this right. moment in the story. The things he was afraid of, the enemy was able to successfully put on him because he was afraid of it. But 
There is good news oh, in this, good. boys and girls. Now, now, uh, Dr. Ella, yes. you have these paper clips held out. Now, boys and girls, if she were to not put this magnet over the paper clips, would they be attracted to it? Yes or no? No. No, correct, because it's not anywhere near it. It can't be drawn to it. Now, boys and girls, let's say that these paper clips represent things that we might be afraid of. Maybe we're afraid of being alone. Maybe we're, uh, we have, there's a feeling of not having enough, any sorts of things. And this is our fear. Sometimes, and most times you'll find, the enemy will come and he will try to make us afraid. He will try and he will push us and he'll push and push. And we might feel like we want to be afraid, but but we can resist the devil. So we can say, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want fear, I resist you. Uh, the Lord is my fortress and my strength. Uh, and the enemy has to flee from us. The enemy has to flee. And in this situation, it's our choice. Remember right. that, boys and girls. Remember that, up. boys and girls. Even if, it, even if it feels like you're just shaking and you just have no strength, if it feels like it, you can still choose yes. to not be afraid. And you know why? because it is the Lord who is in us who gives us the strength, and he's the one who gives us the victory through our Lord, Jesus Christ. Oh, that's so good. It's so good. Huh. Ah. Now, Dr. No. Yes. I think that it is time. <gasps> is it, is it, it time? Is, it is time, boys and girls. Do you know what time it might be? It is confession time. Confession time! time. Yes. Oh, confession time Woo. is so much fun. Oh, wait, <laughs> I got it. That's oh. good. <laughs> Oh boy, nice. I enjoy confession time so much. Uh, okay, can I do the first one? You can do the first one. Okay. <clears throat> Boys and girls, uh, why, don't, uh, why don't you all stand this up, stand up and, and do these confessions with us, okay? This is good. Let's do the first one. <clears throat> I'll set this down. I am. I am. The righteousness. The righteousness. Of God. Of God. In Christ. In Christ. Yes, yes you are. Yes, I am. We yes, should, you are. Yes, you are. Oh, we should do this next one together. Okay, next okay, one together. Okay, we should do all okay. this one together. Ready? Oh, this one's my favorite. I'm, I'm quick. I'm sharp. I'm, I'm bright. Good, good looking. Very rich. And, and a major, major blessing. blessing! Oh, no. that one's my favorite. Oh, now, do we have our doers? Oh, yes, doers. Everybody get your doers out. Get your doers. Here we go. Ready? All together. I'm a doer. I'm a doer. I'm a doer of the word of God. Wonderful. Very boys good. And girls. Wonderful. All right, so now the last one. We're going to need our manuals. And we've got I this have mine. one. You have yours. I don't have mine. Can I, can I borrow with yours? Okay, we'll do it together. Yes. All right, here we okay. go. We're gonna do this one together. Everybody, ready? This, this is my Bible. It is the word of God. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. And I can be what God says I can be. Amen. Amen. Good job. You know, boys and girls, the best decision you could ever make is asking Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord of your life. It's so easy to do, and we are going to pray a prayer of salvation right now. So everyone bow your heads, close your eyes, and say this prayer with me. Father God, I believe in you. I believe you sent your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for my sins. I believe he rose again and he is alive right now. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart and be Lord of my life. Amen. Welcome, boys and girls, to God's family. It is the best decision you've ever made. Wasn't that a fun lesson? Did you guys enjoy learning about Psalm 91 and about God's promise to protect you? Well, I want to encourage you all through this week, think back on this lesson. Think back on what Psalm 91 says. As you do, as you meditate on it and it gets deep down in your heart, you'll be confident that God will always protect you when you do what he says, when you follow him. And you can resist fears that come. It makes it easy when you're confident. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining us. 
I'm Captain Tyler, and I'll see you next time.